Fisher and his friends were out on a hunt. The hunt lasted weeks and weeks. The hunting was difficult because of the snow and the cold. Fisher's friend, the bear, began to worry. Winter has lasted too long, he told Fisher. If spring does not come soon, we will starve. The moose and caribou will have nothing to eat. The beaver will have no lily roots and fresh aspen bark. Something has happened in the sky world to stop the seasons from turning as they should. Let us send Wolverine up to the sky world to find out what the matter is, Fisher said. So they sent for Wolverine. He agreed to go and ascend to the sky world by way of a big pine tree. He was gone for many days. Finally, he returned. A great ogre beyond the edge of the sky has captured all the birds, Wolverine reported. He has imprisoned them in great birch bark baskets. That's why the winter will never end. Who is this ogre? asked Fisher. He is bigger and more cruel than any being here in this world. Worse, he has his brothers with him to guard the birds. We must kill him and free the birds, said Fisher. Having said this, he strapped on his quiver and his knife, picked up his bow, and set out. He came to the great pine tree and climbed it. From the top of the tree, he had a short hop to the opening in the sky. Once through the opening, Fisher found himself in a wonderful world, warm, flowers were everywhere, and the air was alive with the buzzing of bees. Moving across the land, Fisher soon came to the ogre's encampment. The two guardians, ogre's brothers, turned to face him. Realizing quickness was his only chance, Fisher dashed between his legs. He ran as fast as he could to the huge baskets and stove them open. Out poured the birds, flickers, jays, robins, chickadees, ducks, geese, and swans. Up they spiraled in a great black cloud that darkened the entire sky. Then in a tornado of wings, they plunged down through the hole in the sky and entered the world below. The great ogre shouted in rage. He and his brother ran toward the brave little fisher. Once again, fisher used his speed and quickness. He dashed between their legs and raced toward the hole in the sky. Without hesitating, he threw himself through it. Far below, he could see the earth, and before his eyes, it was changing from white to brown to green. Down he fell, the ogre's arrows whizzing all around him. Fisher was lucky. None of the arrows found its mark, and he landed on soft mossy ground. He knew the ogres would not be far behind. He had to make his escape fast. He ran this way, he ran that way, he dodged terrible flights of arrows, but try as he might, he couldn't lose the ogres or his brothers. In fact, they were getting closer. In desperation, he reached up to the great pine tree, thinking he could fool them by climbing into the sky world and then doubling back to earth. Quickly, he climbed the tree, but he was not fast enough. The ogre saw him. A great volley of arrows whizzed by missing him by inches. At the top of the pine tree, Fisher leapt to the north. Here, one of the arrows found its mark and pinned him to the sky by his tail. Around and around he turned, and there he is to this very day. With the freeing of the birds, the ogres lost their power over the earth. So they left by way of the great pine tree back to the hole in the sky, to their world. They have never bothered the inhabitants of Earth again.